Hey team, I'm Maddie. Welcome to Science Side Up. And today we're going to talk about self-care in graduate school. This is the first episode in a new series that I'm trying out called Gaming Grad School. The purpose of this series is to talk about um, common issues that I've dealt with as a graduate student, as well as things I've seen my friends and peers deal with. Um, I also want to address questions that I had when I was applying to graduate school that I didn't always have someone to ask, like, is graduate school the right choice for me? How do I find the right program? How do I find an advisor? Things like that. But for this first episode, I want to talk to everyone who is starting grad school or, or college or just a new school year, but those aren't alliterative, so they didn't make it into the title. Because even if we weren't in the midst of a once in a lifetime health crisis, starting grad school is stressful. Change of any kind always brings stress. A few disclaimers before we get started. One, I am not a mental health professional or a medical professional of any kind. I am someone who has done a lot of stressful academic things. Um, both when I was in the Navy and when I was at MIT, I, I was actually taught a lot of stress management techniques and I thought it might be useful to share those with you all. Second disclaimer, in this video, we're gonna touch on both mental illness and suicide. If that's not something that you're in a place to talk about, that's perfectly fine. When we get to that point in the video, I will put up a disclaimer and a timestamp for when we're gonna be done with that part of the video there will probably be pictures of adorable animals. Let's talk about things that new grad students often deal with. Um, one, your social support network, be that your friends or your family, they're all suddenly far away. So who are you supposed to call when you've had a bad day and wanna go get a coffee or some ice cream and just vent to your friends, to this person that you trust. Um, video calls and modern technology um, are great and definitely help, but it's not the same as having someone physically there to help you through a tough time. Two, you're probably used to being the smartest person in the room, but so is everyone else who is starting grad school with you. So if, if you, like so many other hashtag former gifted kids, derive a lot of your self-worth from your grades, uh, you, you might be sprinting straight towards an existential crisis. Because the reality of the situation is in your new incoming graduate class of incredibly smart people who are all used to being the smartest kid in the room. Half of you will be below average. Third thing new grad students often deal with. If school has always been easy for you, you may have never developed good study skills because you've never had to. And you might find yourself in a situation where suddenly you, you really need those. Tests may have never been stressful for you and now they are because all of a sudden school is hard and that's often new um, for, again, hashtag former gifted kids. When you finally get to a point in your academic career where things aren't easy, Finally, the fourth thing that new grad students often deal with, um, being in your late teens to mid twenties happens to put you in the highest risk group for all violent crime and at a greater risk than the general population for the development of mental illnesses such as anxiety and depression. Um, so just 
that's independent of grad school. That's just based on how old you are. Um, those things certainly have the potential to affect your performance in grad school. And all of those things are compounded by the fact that no living person on planet Earth has ever dealt with a pandemic of this scale before. So how do you take care of yourself and be a generally happy, healthy person able to be successful in your graduate program with all of these things going on. Well, that brings us to self-care. Self-care is so often presented as sushi and a spa day. And don't get me wrong, I deeply enjoy both of those things. Um, but when a friend tells me that they're overwhelmed, I, I don't ask them whether or not they have a mud mask in their backpack. I generally ask them, have you had any water today? When was the last time you ate? And you know, why don't we go for a walk? Seriously, self-care 101 is, is a, when you're feeling overwhelmed, go try to get some sunlight, drink a glass of water and eat a banana and then see how you feel. Unless I guess you're allergic to bananas, but then eat some other appropriate snack. But what do you do when a glass of water and um, 20 minutes on a park bench doesn't help you feel less overwhelmed? That is, how do we differentiate between normal healthy stress and when something is becoming a problem where professional intervention may be appropriate? So to talk about that, I'm going to reference what I like to call the Navy's flow chart of feelings. This is something that's publicly available. I think the copy that I was issued in officer school is out of date, um, but you can find, you know, the current Navy resources at like public.navy.mil. The first question in the flowchart of feelings is, are there signs of distress or loss of function? So these things can be difficulty relaxing and sleeping, loss of interest in social or recreational activities, unusual and excessive fear, worry, or anger, difficulty performing normal tasks, and just any change in normal personality. If you answered no, then you are in the green zone. Now that's where we wanna be. This is where we are ready and good to go. This doesn't mean that there's no stress in our lives whatsoever. Um, it generally means that what stress is in our life is considered normal stress, and it's something that we are well equipped to handle. If you answered yes, then we're in the yellow zone. Um, this is called reacting. It means that there's some abnormal stressor in your life, and that, that could be anything. Maybe you have an upcoming test you're worried about, or you're going through a breakup, or maybe your kitchen caught on fire last night. Being in the yellow zone isn't inherently bad. It just means that there's something going on that you sort of need to handle right now. When you're in the yellow zone, make sure that you're taking care of the basics. Get adequate sleep. Remember to eat, preferably involving vegetables of some variety, not just fast food. Um, talk to someone that you trust about what's going on in your life. All of those things are going to help equip you to handle that stressor that's in front of you. The second question in the flowchart of feelings is, are there signs of severe stress or loss of function? Examples of those could be an inability to fall asleep or stay asleep, withdrawal from social or recreational activities, outbursts of rage or panic, um, inability to control emotions, loss of usual concern for moral values. If you answered yes, then we've moved from yellow to orange. And this can be because of a 
seemingly more minor stressor that's just persisted over a long period of time or some major event has occurred in your life like um, a, a death or major illness in your family or um, your house burned down. Think, think major life events like that. When we've moved into orange, this is when talking to a professional is probably a good idea, especially if those signs we discussed earlier are just not going away. There's a big difference between being stressed out about your test and having trouble getting to sleep the night before and never being able to sleep the night before a test or not being able to sleep at all just night after night after night. Those are big differences. Um, and the latter, again, talking to a professional, probably a good idea. This is the point in the video where we're gonna touch on mental illness and suicidal ideations. So if that's not something you're in a place to discuss, uh, please, please, please skip ahead to this timestamp um, and just join us back at the end. So the third question in the Navy flowchart of feelings is, has the distress or loss of function persisted? If yes, we've moved into the red zone where this is now a medical problem. This is when those orange issues have lasted for weeks or months. The stress problems are either just not getting better or possibly even getting worse over time. Um, additionally, if the person is suicidal, then that is a medical emergency. If you're worried that someone may be considering harming themselves, um, ask them the question, are you thinking about killing yourself? It's a very hard question to ask. I know from experience of having to ask that question. Um, but if they say yes, then your job in that moment is to get them to safety. That is not something that you should ever try and handle yourself. You should respond to that the same way you would if you found your friend passed out on the floor from a bleeding head wound. This is a medical emergency. You are not equipped to handle it. You need to get them to the appropriate resource. And that is your job in that moment. Okay, we got really serious there for a minute. So here are some pictures of dogs. Um, I do think that it's very important that we talk about mental illness in general and suicide prevention in particular, because the person that someone who is having suicidal ideations is most likely to tell is a trusted friend or family member. Um, and so I want to make sure that you are equipped to, that you know what to do um, if someone you care about uh, tells you that they're struggling with thoughts of suicide. Um, okay, but we're done with that part. So welcome back everybody that skipped ahead. Again, doggos, I want to leave you all with a few final thoughts. First, remember that anything you're going through right now is temporary, even if you can't see that end of the tunnel. It does get better. Second, the people around you want you to be successful. They wouldn't have admitted you into the program if they didn't think that. I've always found that my advisor and professors and department have been incredibly supportive when, when life has gotten in the way of school. And so I bet there are more people in your corner than you think. Finally, it's okay to not be okay. I've certainly lost many days of work to um, anxiety quilting 
um, as a coping mechanism. Sometimes rage quilting. If you don't take care of yourself, then there's no way you're gonna be academically successful and be able to be the awesome scientist or whatever else it is you're studying that I know you can be. And in these difficult and unprecedented times, remember to extend yourself and others a little extra grace. No one knows how to handle a pandemic because no one has had to do this before. For the most part, we're all doing the best we can. And I would encourage you to let that be good enough for now. Okay team, that's all I've got for you today. Um, I know we touched on some very serious topics and this is a kind of a different type of video than what I normally do, but I, I hope you liked it. Um, I hope you and those you care about are well. Please like and subscribe and don't forget to be kind. All right, bye team.